In this video, I will talk about the relational data model and the query language structure, query language SQL. The relational data model is the basis for most databases today. Um, it, the concept is that it stores information as sets of tuples of attributes. So basically, each time we have a object we wish to represent in our database, it is represented as a tuple, and think of it as a token, in a set. So the important thing with the, when you're talking about sets is that they are unordered. There's no first object in a set. So we have to be able to reference the tuples on something else than their order, and therefore every tuple must have a unique ID in the relational data model. So we uniquely can identify each of these small tokens. So when we work with sets, think of it as a big bag with small tokens in it, and we can then pick up a token and look at it and its attributes. In QGIS, relations or feature classes or tables are visualized as attributes tables and their representation on the map. So here each tuple, each feature if you wish, road, municipality, so on, is represented as one row and the attributes of the features are represented as columns. Even though it is represented as a table and it is called attribute table, sorry, um, it is not a table like in Excel. We can't talk about row six, row seven. Those rows, they can come in our order and our day. We don't know. There are two tools we use to subset this type of data. We can use filters and we can use exp the expression builder. Both of these use a variation of this query language SQL. So we'll talk about the query language in general and then we'll come back to how it is used in these two tools. So here we see the layer as a representation of the relation. So we have a relation and it's represented here as each row is a tuple in our relation. And this one that is marked as blue in the attribute table is the one that is marked as yellow in the map. So we have the representation of the non-spatial attributes in the attribute table, and we have the representation of the spatial attributes in the map view. And of course the layer is then representing the relation. So we call it layer or feature class of relation. Depends on which background one has. We want to find all names and probably also more names around. So this is the basic representation of a relation in QGIS. The non-spatial attributes are displayed in the attribute table. The spatial attributes are represented in the map view. SQL is based, as I mentioned, on the concept of set theory. So we use all those set operators, so intersection and union, and so on, and knots. Um, we use a bit different names for them than normally in math. So basically, the intersection of two sets, that we call that an AND. The union, we normally call an OR. And then we use nots and XORs. If we look at this little table here, just to summarize the principles here, I have a attribute A and a B. And if it says T, that means true, and F means false. So if you have two T's and you use the AND, then you get a T, because both have to be true in order to generate a AND true. So it has both have to be part of this concept here in the middle. 
if you use an or, we never mind which of them, just one of them is true, we'll get a true. So in this case we have a true and a false, which in the and return to false, but in the or returns a true. And a false and a true, the opposite way around, gives the same results. And the two falses will give a false in both situations. In QGIS and in most RGR spatial enabled softwares, um, true is represented as one and false is represented as zero, or to be more correct, false is represented as zero and true is anything else. So whenever we do maths on true and false, we are really operating on integer values of one or zero. And that means that the multiplication function just like the AND does. So we have a one, all the places we have had a true O and the AND, and the plus function just like the OR. So we have only got the zero, that's the place where we had the false in the OR. So when working with true and false, or working with sets in QGIS, you'll very often find yourself using ones and zeros instead of trues and false and here the zero is the false and the one or basically anything else than zero is true. Just let's look at some examples. Um, this is um, the full-blown SQL syntax that um, we can use if you're using a database. In QGIS you only use this part of it after the where we call it the clause, the where clause, and the only thing you normally give or type in is this where clause. So we have this example code with three objects. They are from addresses. We have a road code, a house number, a storage, and a door left or right, and a municipality code. If we enter road code or y code equals 7 in our SQL tools in, in QGIS, it will then return those two where the road code is 7 because it will substitute the variable road code with the value, so the 7, and it says is 7 equal 7? Yes it is. So it will return true, and if it returns true, the whole row, row here is returned and included in our data set. So up here, this first one, it says row code 4. Is 4 equal 7? No, so that's not included. But these two will be included because road code is the same as 7. So you'll get these two rows. So that's the simplest case. We can combine these clauses to a more complex clauses using ands and ors. If you look at the same data set here again, and remember that the and means that both our criteria, so both clauses or subclauses you wish, have to be true. While the or is that other of the subclauses is true. So basic basic example, let's say if y code or road code equal 7 and floor etasia is 1, we'll go down and do a substitute 4 for y code and say is 4 equal 7? No, no. Is 7 equal 7? Yes. Is etasia equal 1? No, it's not. So that's not. Is, it, is y code 7? Yes. Is it Tasha 1? Yes. So this row here is then our row 16 is then included in our result. If we use the all, it says okay. Is well, in this case here is y cool equal 7? Is 4 equal 7? No, it's not. Is it Tasha equal 1? Yes, it is. So that will be included. Next row here is y equal 7. Yes, it is. 
is a taste no it's not but it's an or so it will be included and so on with the first so in this case with y could equal 7 or a taste equal 1 all of our three rows are included in the result because they, these bottom rows here they are true in the case that the y code is 7 and this one is because that the tasia is 1. So we can combine them with ands and ors. I should say in general when using logic and especially ands and ors it can be very vital to use parentheses um, because no one can really remember what is priority. We know that in math, many the multiplication takes priority over the addition, but does and take priority over or? Well, if you're in doubt, use parentheses and then you don't run into problems. But yes, and does take priority over all. So, this was the basics of the relational data model, how it's supported in QGIS and how we can use SQL structure query language, this basic concept of set theory to make, create subsets.